Hey, Ricky, it's Cartman. Uh, listen, uh, I know we're we're not getting along. I know we're we're having some issues here, and uh, you know we're, we're spatting a little bit. But I, I just wanted to tell you, it's a it's a real shame that you're having problems accessing your bank account. Your taxes are you know getting audited. The fact that your car payments may not have gone through properly. Um, that also your internet history was shared with your wife. You know, I'm I have a few regrets of some things that may have happened out of anger, but I'm sure that you know you'll be fine things will things will work out for you you know but i guess you fucked around and you found out so you know you reap what you sell by. Sexy go get up. Yeah, you know that's right. Get real. Welcome to another penny dropping episode of Red Movie Rama. Oh, you know it. And this is another special episode because we're doing another listener request. And this request comes from two people actually. Two great podcasters, two great friends. R.J. McCready and Alicia Newman. Uh, oh, wait, wait, Skippy. She's not kin to Randy, is she? No, no, she's not kin to him, but she knows who he is. We go back a long way. We used to sing some bare naked ladies together. I didn't know that you liked that devil music. Come on, Aswell. Bare naked ladies is not devil music. Anyways, they requested the 1985 comedy uh, sex movie Fraternity Vacation. Yeah, it's about to get hot up in here. Really? Really? I mean, we're one minute into the show and you're already acting a fool? Don't be so stale, Aswell. We're just getting started. Anyways, this movie, Fraternity Vacation, it's like a who's who of horror flick. Classic TV shows and classic movies, it's just got a whole bunch of people in here. Well, really? How so then? Well, not to just totally drop names because we got somebody else that does that job, but you got two ladies from Reanimator and Bride of Reanimator. You got uh, the main character that was in the Argento film Inferno. You've got two characters from Fright Night. And you've also got the uh, the dad from Alf. Alf. Now, that's a show. That's a great family fun show. Yeah, well, this is going to be a fun show, too, so we don't need to waste any more time. Let's get crack a lacking. Okay, let me say it. Take it away, Rick. Fraternity Vacation is a 1985 comedy slash sex comedy directed by James Frawley. Despite being saddled with a nerdy pledge, during a Palm Springs weekend, two frat brothers vie for a poolside blonde. Starring Stephen Jeffries as Wendell. Hey, it's the little guy from Fright Night. And Amanda Bierce as Nicole. Hey, it's the girlfriend from Fright Night. Lee McCoskley as Lawler the Third. Hey, He's from Dario Argento's Inferno. Cameron Dye as Joe. Hey, he's the other guy in Valley Girl. Barbara Crampton as Chrissy. Hey, it's the uh, girl from Reanimator. Kathleen Kinmont as Marianne. Hey, it's the girl from Reanimator Part 2. Cherie Wilson as Ashley. Hey, she's on Walker, Texas Ranger. And Tim Robbins as Mother. I don't know of anything else he's been in. And a whole lot more people in this cast that you say, Hey, that's that person from so-and-so. Back to you, Rick. All right, this movie kicks off by meeting uh, two characters named Joe and Mother. And they're at the airport, and they're getting tickets, and they're going to Palm Springs for the weekend. And uh, they're from an Iowa State fraternity. Okay, hold on. You're talking way too fast. Uh, Hold on. Yeah, I'm already confused. Did did you say mother? Yeah, it's uh, it's his uh, nickname. Well, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. Who who would want to be nicknamed mother? Well, when your last name is Tucker, people in the 80s found that amusing. Oh, well, 
yeah, I don't, I don't get it. A- anyways, they're taking a new pledge along with them, and and uh, his name is Wendell. Well, well, how about that? How about these uh, these nice guys? I mean, these this little guy's not even in their little club, and they're taking him to Paul Strings. Well, they're not that nice. I mean, they're taking Wendell as an initiation, but really, it's because Wendell's parents are footing the bill for the trip, and also if uh, Wendell makes it into the uh, fraternity. Then uh, Wendell's dad promises to pump a lot of money into the fraternity. Well, how times have changed, because nowadays if parents use their money to get their kids into college, it's frowned upon. Uh, Yeah, you're exactly right, and a lot of things have changed since the 80s. But uh, anyways, Wendell's father, who happens to be the dad on that show that you like so much, Alf. Yeah. And then you took the words right out of my Alf. Oh, must have been while he was on TV. Hey, Studley, what the heck was that? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, who was that? It's the biggest trucker in the mall. Nope, not a clue. Well, now come on, you guys. It's Meatloaf. Meatloaf? Holy crap, we got Meatloaf on our show? Well, great. That's not going to help things. Why does anyone listen to this show? Look, no one listens to this show. This show sucks my ass. Anyways, back to the movie. Uh, Wendell's dad asked Joe and Mother to help break Wendell out of his shell and get him around some members of the opposite sex. Well, there you go again. Another great example of parenting in the 80s. Yeah. Anyways, we arrive at Palm Springs, and uh, that's where all the 80s ladies are walking around, waving and smiling just for you. In their bikinis and their big 80s hair? Well, it sounds like Sodom and Gomorrah to me. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Until uh, Wendell and the guy see a carload of hot blondes in the convertible. And uh, Wendell introduces himself and his friends, and the ladies drive off, and they're just laughing at him. Now, why, why would they do that? He was just trying to be nice. Oh, well, you see, in the 80s, Wendell's what we called a nerd. Well, what is what is that supposed to mean? Well, why don't you go ask your mama? Well, Randy's quick on his feet today. Uh, so anyways, Joe and Mother realize that, uh, yeah, he's got this nerd problem, and they have to go fix this pretty quick. So we get an awesome 80s montage of uh, Wendell getting made over uh, to some Bananarama songs. What? But Bananarama? Do they, do they show up in this movie? Uh, no, they don't. Dang it. Anyways, while they're helping Wendell do some shopping, they're spotted by another couple of guys that go to the same college. And these guys are named Chaz and JC. Holy jeesh, what's up with the names of these characters in this movie? Sounds like a couple of cop shows. Joe and Mother and Chaz and JC. Well, they're they're not cops, they're preps. Yeah, I, I don't know what that means either. It's an 80s term for rich kids who flaunted that they came from uh, a lot of money. Oh, well, then. They sound like they're just a couple of arrogant jackasses. <laughs> arrogant pricks? Jeez, that's just like Rick. Christ, what an asshole. Everybody should just take turns kicking you in the nuts. We'll get back to Chaz and JC later on, but right now, Wendell and the guys are going inside the condo that they're staying in, which happens to belong to Wendell's cousin. Well, of course it does. Skippy? I mean, these guys are just using Wendell, and I don't like it. Well, just just hold on, as well. Uh, while they're up there checking things out, Wendell has this telescope that he uses with his camera, and Joe and Mother start using the, the telescope to check out the girls at the pool. But they also check out a lady that's across from them in another condo that uh, the guys think are is perfection. Opportunity, that's my soul. I really love this telescope. Is he going to be here long? It's getting kind of crowded. Yeah, I, I don't know. We, we will see. But the guys realized that the, the girl that they were looking at in the tele... Don't say it! ...in the camera was out of their league. So Joe grabs the jam box, and they wrap the towels around their necks, and they go down to the pool. Hold on, Skippy. Another question. Let me guess. You don't know what a jam box is. Yeah, nope. Well, it's a portable radio slash cassette player, which uh, was made to be 
used to play music in pretty much uh, anywhere at any time at very loud volumes. The only box I see around here is labeled Ricky's shit when he gets kicked out of his house from all of this. So, uh, so what were they listening to on this jam box, Captain and Tennille? Well, I really doubt that that's what it is, but that's not important. What is important is earlier when we saw Chaz and JC, there was two girls in the car. And Chaz and JC get these girls to go play a trick on Joe and Mother. So they sent those girls down to the pool to seduce them. Oh, yeah. So they would uh, take them back to the condo uh-huh. and uh, go to the bedroom. And the girls go in there and strip off naked right in front of the guy. Oh, yeah. Now, that's hot. That's hot, hot. Oh, geez. Here we go again. It's going to be one of those movies where this guy goes bonkers. Yeah. And, you know, I can see why. But anyways, the, the girls go to the bathroom. And while the guys are anticipating their return... Uh, they can hear the girls talking in the bathroom, and one of them talks about possibly having a sexual disease. Yeah, so that means you know these girls are hot. What? What? Are you out of your mind? Holy jeez, they need to stay away from these ladies. They sure do. Christ, I wish the doctors could give me a shot to forget about this fucking show. Anyways, Joe and Mother decide to uh, tell the ladies that uh, they've got some important business that came up, and the ladies are going to have to leave. And while they're going out the front door... Chaz and JC come in. I can already tell that I don't like these guys at all. At all. You know what I don't like? The stupid fucking show and the asshole that makes it. Well, I don't think that Joe and Mother really like them that much either, but uh, they hang out for a while and then we get some machismo talk. And then they decide to place a bet. And they're going to see which one of them can have sex with the uh, good-looking woman that was on the balcony across from them that they were looking at earlier. And uh, they bet a thousand dollars a piece. Geez, Studley, you know, I don't, I don't know what's worse. These, these are some terrible people. What, what kind of crazy lunatic movie are you making me watch here? I mean, I, I'm almost thinking that the, the, the rapey sea creatures are better people than these guys are. Well, there was a, a ton of these kind of movies that came out in the mid '80s, and you, you can't take them seriously. Anyways, the guys take Wendell out, and they try to get him hooked up, and uh, they tell him a few nice things to say to ladies, and they tell him a few not-so-nice things to say. And Wendell uh, sees a girl that uh, he's attracted to, so he goes over to her and sits down and says the nice things, and she doesn't react. So then he says the bad thing, and she chuckles and said she likes a guy with a sense of humor. And then they walk out together and go get some ice cream. Well, good for them. It's nice to see people go out and have a nice evening together. I mean, you don't have to lower your standards like these other morons. Well, it's funny that you say that, because when Joe and Mother get back to the condo, Wendell and his new girlfriend are in the uh, in the big bedroom oh, together. Oh, oh, man, Wendell's going to get it. It's going to get hot. Well, geez, never mind. Sounds like he is stooping down to their level. Yeah. Actually, they're not knocking boots. They're just hanging out together. But Joe and Mother think otherwise listen folks you really should be listening to something way better than this show it's such horse shit the next day joe and mother start working up their plan on how to approach ashley well you know i'm gonna ask okay uh who's who's ashley okay well that's that's the name of the girl that uh, they placed the bet on and they decided to play the sympathy card and they see her down at the pool and they sit close to her, and they give a, a made-up story about how Joe's girlfriend has left him, and she only wanted him for his money, and uh, he could never trust a woman again. And Mother pretends to be the buddy that's going to help him find the right woman again. Well, surely she's not going to fall for that, right? Well, she is kind of paying attention, but the uh, conversation gets broke up because here comes a guy that's skydiving, and he lands in the pool, and it ends up being Chaz. And he makes his big grand entrance and claims that he's lecturing at the college tonight. And his new book that he wrote is about to come out. And Ashley just kind of rolls her eyes and gets up and leaves. Well, maybe she just had to go to the bathroom. Kind of like this show. Belongs in the bathroom. Like a piece of shit that it is. After both attempts fail for both of the guys, uh, all four of them are hanging out in the sauna together. Because that's an 80s thing to do. And they talk about how you have to have proof that one of them has ended up with Ashley. So, uh... Chaz and JC get up and leave, and they lock Mother and Joe inside the the sauna with a very lightweight chair in front of the door. What? What? What a couple of a holes. Well, that's telling them as well. But yeah, the guys manage to get out, and they're gonna go chase the other two guys. But then they see Ashley coming, and Mother comes up with another idea and makes Joe get back into the sauna. And when Ashley shows up, uh. 
Mother pretends that Joe's trying to kill himself in the sauna to get Ashley's attention. And then she helps Mother get uh, Joe out of the sauna, and uh, then they help him recuperate. And out of sympathy, Joe ends up scoring a date with Ashley. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Well, these guys are a couple of bungholes, too, then. Speaking of assholes, everybody, the guy who records this show, right? So what's Wendell doing at this time? Well, he's on his way to pick up Nicole, you know, which is his new girlfriend. Wow, they they must have, like, really hit it off then. Uh, yeah, it seems like it. Things are going pretty well. But then she tells Wendell that he has to meet her parents the, the next night. And she says if her dad uh, doesn't approve of him, that she can't see him anymore. So he's actually planning on meeting her parents? He sure is. Wendell would do anything for love. Well, we didn't see that one coming. Actually, we knew it was going to happen. We just didn't know when. Yeah, and now it's Chaz's turn. Uh, Ashley has gone to a gym for a workout, and he shows up pretending to be like a health trainer. And uh, she ends up asking him to uh, come back to her place and teach her some more stuff later on. Uh, well, is she that naive? Yeah, she seems pretty gullible. But uh, after the workout, she goes back home and takes a shower. And meanwhile, Joe and Mother are setting up the camera outside so they can have proof uh, of Joe and Ashley being together. And the camera's pointed right into her bedroom, and while they're setting up the camera, they see Ashley completely naked. Oh, 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 yeah. Things are about to get hot, hot, hot. Okay, it's time to call the dog catcher. He's getting out of control. Uh, oh, well, uh, so are they gentlemen, and they just look away? Oh, no, no. They're, they're, uh, they end up taking some pictures. Oh, geez, these guys are terrible. It's, that's against the law. Uh, anyways, so where's Wendell at during all this? Well, speaking of breaking the law, he, he ends up in jail. What? He was on the roof taking some pictures of the skyline, and uh, he fell and while hanging off the edge of the roof. It ripped his pants off, and uh, he fell down onto the next balcony. And uh, it's a woman's balcony sitting there, and she thinks he's a rapist and oh. calls the police. Wow. Man, you you talk about some, some bad luck there. Yeah, not only that, but uh, he also gets a hard time from the police chief, who's also a butthole in this movie. And uh, he tells Wendell that uh, ra- rapist makes his stomach churn. Wow. I, you know, I just don't understand why anyone would want to go to Palm Springs. It sounds like everybody there is just so mean. Yeah, they kind of are. But meanwhile, Joe is out on his date with Ashley, and everything is going well until they get back to her place. And uh, he ends up trying to make a move on her, and uh, she makes him leave. But Mother does get a few pictures of uh, Joe making his moves on her. Well, yay for them, bunch of jerks. So so what about Wendell still being stuck in jail? Well, finally, the lady drops the charges, and they let him out, uh, along with a couple of prostitutes that he met in there. And uh, they give him a ride home, and Mother and Joe... Uh, see him with the prostitutes and they say that they've created a monster you know else is a filthy whore the guy who makes this show because he uses people's names to get other people to listen to this piece of shit so next day joe and mother go to get their pictures developed and they're not happy with the results and they get the guy that's working around to take the new pictures of ashley and put them in the pictures with joe in the bedroom for evidence to win the challenge and meanwhile Chaz is at ashley's house working out with her and he's uh recording it all on a little audio cassette recorder but well, that don't make any sense why why would he do that well because the sound of two people working out sounds a whole lot like something else and he's going to use that as his evidence and but while he's at ashley's house he also tries to make a move on her and she kicks him in the nuts and makes him leave well well good for her sounds like she's not gonna put up with that kind of crap this show is so much more annoying than fucking jock itch on a hot summer's day right at the peak of the sweat rolling down and you know it's fucking spreading it's more annoying than that and now we're at the point to where wendell is gonna meet nicole's parents and he's wanting to make a good impression and they 
meet at this nice, fancy restaurant. Well, is, is there a naked lady dancing at the restaurant? Uh, no, there's not. Well, it's not very fancy then, is it? Well, I, I guess not. But anyways, they're all sitting there, and uh, Nicole's father is running late. So the rest of them sitting and waiting in anticipation. And when the dad shows up, he's the police captain. And uh, when he sees Wendell, he yells rapist and chases him out of the restaurant. Oh, no. Can, can he just make them understand it's just a big misunderstanding? Is Nicole upset? Well, that's that's the thing. You see, she's not. Matter of fact, she kind of gets off on the fact that her dad runs guys off. And uh, she kind of likes it that way. And this totally breaks Wendell's heart. Oh, that's just, that's absolutely terrible. I feel sorry for the guy. Yeah, it's a it's a low blow. But uh, back at the apartment, all the guys get together and compare their evidence. And Mother says that uh, they took pictures last night, and Chaz said that he nailed her this morning. So because of the time constraints, Mother and Joe win the money. Well, whoopity do! I hope these scumbags are happy with themselves. Uh, well, they are pretty happy till Ashley walks in the front door and she's really upset when she finds out that they placed a bet on her. And uh, yeah, it doesn't go well from there. But how does how does she know that all the guys are in the apartment together? Well, she happens to be watching out uh, off the balcony like always and sees the four of them going to the apartment together, and she starts. Starts putting it all together in the head and walks over to see what the deal is. Look, there's like, what, four of you that listen to this show? I've seen the numbers. There's like four. I'm being generous. There's four of you. But listen, find a better show, all right? You guys deserve better than this. You have so many choices of free entertainment. Pick a better show than this. This is just fucking terrible. And the guys won't even admit that nothing happened with her. So she storms out and leaves and takes off in her car. And Joe's the only one that goes chasing after her, but uh, he can't catch her. She's already gone. She jumped in her Volkswagen and she's riding away like a bell out of hell. Well, uh... This movie and this show have become really chaotic. Well, to add even more chaos, uh, Nicole calls Joe and Mother looking for Wendell because no one knows where he is. So uh, Mother and Joe, since uh, they don't have anything to drive, they jump in Chaz's car and hotwire it and go look for Wendell. That's illegal. And they go to Nicole's house to talk to her, but the dad won't let them talk to her, and he runs them off because they're having a big uh, pool party out back. And uh, plus, he just didn't want these two guys around his daughter. Well, can you blame him, Skippy? Well, probably not, but while they're leaving, they get the crazy idea of crashing the party. Literally, like with the Mercedes. And uh, then the dad ends up throwing them in jail. Well, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. That's what Dave Z says. Piece of shit show. Oh, yeah, Dave Z's one of my heroes, but I don't think he said that. But now we find out what happened to Wendell. The Jeep broke down, and he's on the side of the road. And who happens to come by? Ashley. And she picks him up and gives him a ride. Oh, yeah, now that's hot! Sir, you need to wash your brain out with soap. And, and while they're riding along, they share stories of how they've been used and abused. Well, that's really nice. It's nice to have a shoulder to cry on. Uh, but what about uh, Mother and Joe? Uh, how are they going to get out of this situation? Uh, well, in a slight change of heart, it's the only good thing that Chaz and JC do. But uh, they get all the kids that are there to go out in front of the jail and protest until, until they set uh, Mother and Joe free. And it works with a little help from Nicole. Well, it's, it's good to see the bad people trying to make things right. Hope you're happy with yourself, Rick. You're a fucking douchebag. Yeah, Nicole threatens to uh, move away and never speak to her dad again if he doesn't let them go. And uh, she says that she would even marry a Democrat. What? what so what's wrong with that? Well, it's just an 80s thing. But the guys get out and the four of them and the two bimbos from earlier go back to the apartment and they're going to celebrate. And then while they're making a bunch of racket, Wendell sticks his head out of the bedroom and says, Hey, could you guys hold it down? I'm kind of busy in here. And uh, he and Ashley hooked up. Yeah, that's my boy right there. That's hot. Wait, wait, what? What? Now, now, come on. I mean, we've talked about movies. We've, we've talked about serial killers that can't die. We've talked about giant rats. We're talking about priests making, you know, guts coming out of your face. 
but this is the most unbelievable thing we've seen yet. Why in the world would she actually sleep with Wendell? Well, during one of Wendell and Ashley's conversations, he talks about still being a virgin and how important it is for him to be considered accepted by the guys and just to fit in. So in order for him to fit in, she deflowers him. And everyone is shocked when they see Ashley come out of the bedroom and apologies are made and Ashley is cool with everybody. That's it. I'm done. And the next day, the guys all say their goodbyes and they go back to college and that's the end of the movie. And it should be the end of this fucking terrible product. Someone needs to put a bullet in this fucking show's skull. I think it's safe to say that... uh Aswell doesn't care for this movie, just like all the other ones we talk about on this show. But uh, how about the rest of you? What do you feel about it? I think it's crazy. Get real. Well, I'm glad you guys liked it because I like this one too. You know, it's not the best one, but uh, it's got a lot of charm to it. And like I said, the cast of this is just a who's who. Uh, You're not going to get a lineup like this anywhere else. So if you like 80s sex comedies, this one you should check out. Folks, we will check you later. Adios, people.